glorious things of thee are spoken, Zion, city of our God. He whose word cannot be broken, form thee for his own abode. On the rock of ages founded, what can shake thy sure repose? You wonder why I'm singing that, don't you? Well, if you've done the Bible readings today, <laughs> you know why. Because it's from Psalm 87, the classic hymn. It was written by John Newton. Now, you know John Newton from Amazing Grace, right? And uh, John Newton was a British slave ship captain who was marvelously saved by God. Hence, amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found, was blind, but now I see. Uh, Newton left shipping and being a ship captain and became a humble pastor and uh, had an enormous influence on church history uh, through amazing grace alone, but not just that hymn. Also, he wrote that hymn glorious things of thee are spoken based on Psalm 87. So here's Psalm 87. On the holy mount stands the city he founded. The Lord loves the gates of Zion more than all the dwelling places of Jacob. Glorious things of you are spoken, O city of God. Selah. Among those who know me, I mention Rahab and Babylon. Behold, Philistia and Tyre with Cush. This one was born there, they say. And of Zion it shall be said, This one and that one were born in her. For the Most High himself will establish her. The Lord records as he registers the peoples, This one was born there. Selah. Singers and dancers alike say, all my springs are in you. So, the picture is of God's city, a dwelling place for God's people, a city fed by the springs that God wells up to meet the needs of his people. And, and it's God's dwelling place for his people forever. So there was Jerusalem, the city of David, Zion uh, of that time, but it was also a picture of something future. Here's what Warren Wiersbe says. The earthly Mount Zion is a figure of the heavenly Zion, the city of God and God's redeemed people. So if you're born or born again into the family of God, salvation by grace through faith in Christ. You're a citizen of that great city of God, and you have an eternal home, a dwelling place. Now, that's today's Bible readings, and, and the reason that I put them on this video is, of course, that constantly in these days with the challenges of the times. We perhaps were glued to the television yesterday with the verdict in the, in the trial up in Minneapolis. And, and there's so much upheaval in our country and around the world. I was reading this morning of uh, soaring COVID rates in India, for example, one of the neediest lands on earth, one of the neediest lands for the gospel on earth, India, and COVID is ravaging there right now. And of course, uh, our own struggle with that here in the United States. All of these things have us wistful sometimes, right? For the heavenly city, for the future dwelling place of God's people. And this Psalm, Psalm 87, our Bible reading today is a great reminder that God has his plan, God has his people in his providence. He has a city that he is preparing, a new Jerusalem, 
a new heaven, a new earth that will be the dwelling place of his born again people forever and ever. So whatever challenge you're facing today, whatever difficulty, whatever trial, whatever's made the, the week difficult, let's keep our eyes focused on the city of Zion, our eternal home, and the reality that all these things, God has them in hand, and our future is secure in Christ Jesus. Well, this weekend, uh, the elders are going to be meeting Friday evening and Saturday for uh, we call it a retreat, but we'll be right here in town. But we're kind of following up on a retreat of a few months ago, and we're trying to look ahead and see what God would have us do. These are strategic days, right? And we want to be found working for the kingdom when Jesus returns. And if it could be soon, we believe it could be, well, we want to be found laboring in the vineyard. <laughs> I'm kind of mixing my metaphors here, aren't I? You know, the vineyard, the kingdom, Zion, but we want to be working for Jesus and fulfilling the commission that he's given us. And so we're going to be meeting Friday evening, Saturday. Would you be praying for us? Ask you to do that. And then uh, Sunday, of course, we'll have worship at both campuses, but uh, in the afternoon. Uh, by the way, prime timers, you have a, a lunch at uh, South Campus on Sunday, but a little bit later at four o'clock, there'll be a all church uh, quarterly meeting and uh, encourage especially members, all are welcome to attend, but especially members to come to that at four o'clock here at South Campus and um, be praying for that too. And we'll update you on some things and we, we do have good things to report God has been gracious to us and he continues to meet our needs financially and we're so grateful for that during these troubled times. Tonight, prayer on Zoom. Join us. The link is in this newsletter. Thomas will give it to you. Youth group meeting tonight as well. Middle school, and high school, youth. There's good things coming. Sunday afternoon at 4 you can hear from Angela plans for children and youth this summer and so forth. Um, God bless you. I hope you have a great day. Hope to see some of you tonight on our Zoom prayer call. And um, I hope that you'll take to heart the message of Psalm 87 and find joy in trusting Jesus Christ about your future home in a Zion that he's preparing for you. Mm -hmm.